Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. This week we have actual 9-8 bouldering news and this time someone isn't going to come along and downgrade it. Probably. Sup T, how you doing? Sup, good. Good, it's spring and it just snowed this morning <laughs> it did indeed yeah there's a dusting of snow uh, but there's still some sun in the air and we've got a bunch of news for you today including some uber hard grades and we're starting with as mentioned in that intro what could be the world's second please 9a boulder Daniel Woods has sent his project Return of the Sleepwalker and has proposed a grade of 9A slash V17. This has been reported by pretty much every climbing media source there is. This 17 move boulder adds a sit start to the established boulder Sleepwalker, an 8C+. Although Daniel tried the sit start almost immediately after sending Sleepwalker, he only really focused on it for the last three months. He's been showing all his progress on his Instagram and has been dedicating everything to the send, including sleeping by the boulder. As with all first ascents, this is only a proposed grade, but we have a feeling that this one will stick. Now, the reason that I say fingers crossed is we've seen a few potential second 9A boulders. Yes. Um, of course, we have Charles Albers, no capote only. We had the one you guys covered last week, uh, the sit start to the big island. Mm -hmm. All of those have sort of been downgraded by the next ascensionist, sort of. So that 9A grade has sort of disappeared. Yeah. Look, Daniel Woods is a legend, right? Mm -hmm. He's been dedicating himself to that boulder, like full on. He keeps showing Instagram pictures of himself looking ripped in a His mirror. guns. Did you see that one? I bet yeah, you, yes. I bet you saw uh, that I one. saw it. I saw, I had a flutter <laughs> when I saw that one. I was like, Daniel, right. Daniel. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Look, do you think it's going to be downgraded? Uh, I don't think it can be downgraded. Explain. Because, like, nobody ever questioned Sleepwalker as an 8C+, right? Mm -hmm. um, so because of that, I mean, what is it, two harder moves from the beginning? I think it's a lot of harder moves in the beginning. It's super crimpy. Okay. And someone was commenting, you know when I was talking about, like, how if one grade's a grade and then you stack another grade on top of yes. it? Yes. All that. Yes. The general consensus was is it isn't if there's a rest. With that thing, there is no rest. It's savagery right. into more savagery. Yeah. Got to yeah. be 9A. Uh, it's probably a 9A. Yeah. So V17. Nice one, Daniel. Nice one, Daniel. Moving on to Austria, where Babsy sent a 9A. Barbara Zangl, or Babsy, made the second ascent of Sprengstoff, 9A. It was bolted 25 years ago by Beat Kammerlander and only freed last November by Jakob Larker. Sprangstoff actually means explosive, a fitting name since the crag is next to a quarry and the crag is at risk of getting blown up. First 9A of the year. Well, like female 9A, female 9A counter. Thing. Thing. <laughs> yeah, we've got a few counters coming up today, which yes. is good to see. Yes. Babsy, what a legend. I know, right? I mean, this is what, her third 9A? She said it's the most difficult route she has ever done, though. It's pretty so pretty hard for her. Yeah, she she already did like speed integral as well. Is that's that's like the one with the, the, the no looking the endurancey thing. The no that's looking super rest, slab, just yeah. smashing up vertical. On. Yeah, that's sloppy. Yeah. Uh, right, I've got nine B news uh, now, and George Diaz Rulo is at it again. Jorge Diaz Rulo has repeated first round first minute a nine B in Margalef, Spain, as reported by Planet Mountain. Jorge climbed first lay, a 9A plus that shares the start of that 9B in March, and then spent another nine sessions on the full first round, first minute line. This is the 21-year-old's fourth 9B, and he's quickly establishing himself amongst the world's elite climbers. Jorge, uh, Jorge. as I said, yeah, I think I said George, what did I say? I said something, I might have messed up his name, but Jorge, um, it seems to be like we talk about that man a lot. He is active, isn't he? Uh, yeah, but like outdoor sport climbing, like he's done, he's repeated most of the 9Bs in Spain by now, right? Pretty much, right? yeah, I reckon. Ish. Ish. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? You're the AA.NU uh, database nerd. Fun. You Fun. should have an account. I don't understand why you haven't made an 8A.NU account. Here's the thing, right? I know what I should because I can log my climbs. Yes. Um, but the thing is, if I, I haven't been logging my climbs okay. and I feel like I'm too far into my climbing world to start logging them now so if i start logging them i've missed a whole load of climbs i can never remember my profile looked rubbish and i have an ego yeah but you could start in like 2020 or something like that like make a cut in your climbing career and on your profile well from now on this is aa this is a fit maybe maybe yes 
discuss it. Let me know if you want me to do a profile down below. Please do. Uh, right, I'm moving on to some bouldering news from the US. Alex Johnson has done her second 8B, the swarm in buttermilks. Renowned for being one of the hardest crimpy problems in the US, Alex first tried this boulder in 2011, 10 years ago, and on an essay on climbing.com, she describes it as one of the most beautiful and impressive lines she's ever seen. So about this boulder, she gave it a V13 slash V14, which is 8B, I suppose. <laughs> there are all these slashes going around. I don't know what we're reporting on anymore. You hate the slashes, don't you? You've always hated yeah. the slashes. I agree with you. The slash should go forever. Yeah. Um, you were saying Alex Jones has got 100,000 Instagram followers. Yeah, she's popular. Yeah, that's amazingly popular. Yeah, it's almost as Epic TV and like... You know, <laughs> we put so much work into I that. Know. Days, we have dedicated people. You, dedicated to this, and she's just smashing it out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's a cool climber, like awesome tattoos, smashing hard boulders. Yeah. Was in the comp scene for a while, dropped out, came back in for the Olympic ticket, like... On it. She's on it. On it. On it. Uh, now we have a variety of 9As for you in our 9A roundup. Angelo Bernal Quintero has sent the 9A, Victimes de Future, a 9A in Catalonia, Spain, as seen on his Instagram. He says after five years of effort, he's managed to tick his first 9A, and he clearly sees this as a defining moment in his climbing career. Yannick Flo has sent the 9A slash plus geocache in the Frankenjura, Germany, as reported by 8A.nu. It took him three sessions to send the climb, and this is the third ascent of that route. As reported on 8A.nu, Alex Garriga has made the first ascent of Maleus Maleficarum, giving it the grade of 9A+. And a couple of days later, he red-pointed following the leader, 9A+. In Italy, Stefano Ghisolfi has made another 9A+, ascent at the crag of Padaro, calling it Terapia d'Urto. He also made the second ascent of the Ring of Life, giving it the grade of 9A slash plus. In France, Loic Zani has done the first ascent of Le Colosse Travlo 9A, giving it the grade of soft 9A plus or hard 9A, and he further describes it as one of the most beautiful and hard routes in Oregon. Whoa. That's a 9A roundup. 9A plus roundup. I feel we should just step it up to a solid plus. So you don't get into the 9A roundup unless you've, you've solidly plussed it. Slash is not allowed. Yes. That's fair enough. Epic TV athlete Stefano Gasolfi. I'm going to say that I reckon lockdown, COVID, all of that has done more for Italian climbing than anything else because he's been focusing just on that. You know what I mean? Like he's in Arco, he's in the surrounding area. He's just poured everything into his home country. And I, I didn't realize Italy had that many hard climbs. Well, they were just, I guess, waiting for him to be climbed. This is, and he has climbed them. He has, and continues to do so. See, uh, now we said we had a lot of counter news, so mm. let's crack on with the nine B counter. <laughs> Yay, I'm so excited for this week. So first, one point for Babsy. Yes, so first uh, women on the women's 9A counter. Yes. Is that correct this year? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, damn. Ooh. We're off to a running start. Um, we haven't got a 9A boulder counter, so no. Dave will handle that one. Dave, well, he's Dave. on the 8C plus counter with two points. That's true, which Dave is he's on that, isn't he? Yes. So Daniel Woods, two points. And then uh, Jorge with one point. Yes, Jorge, and that's the counter that we controlling, the 9B counter. So Jorge is on that. Nice one, mate. Uh, finally, we've got some ticks. Uh, I know, but like, I feel they're gonna like diminish from now onwards because comp season is starting. It has started, that's true. It's starting two weeks time in Merenguin. Uh I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be talking, commentating, chatting a load of rubbish. So do come and join us on that. Uh, and yeah, can't wait for that to get going. Yay. Shop stuff time now. Uh, and there's a bunch of clothing sort of that we should check out really. Yes, I have seen some interesting things on the Patagonia page. So there's a good selection of jumpers, shorts, shirts, and if you want to feel all floral, like Alex Magus and like Send 9C, you can get yourself a nice organic cotton shirt. There we go. Look like Magus by Patagonia. Yes. Um, I want to highlight Problem Solver because mm. 
I'll bang on about this a lot, but I spent my own money on Problem Solver, okay. right? Usually I get sent some stuff. It's very nice. Thank you, brands. I bought a Problem Solver handball because I wanted like a travel ball so I could take on the road, keep my finger strength going. They've got a range of products, a lot of it free hanging. I, I rate it. I really genuinely rate it. I think they're fantastic fingerboards. Mm. That's all back in stock in the Epic TV shop. The link down below for both the stuff we've been talking about. So go and check that out if you want training gear or clothing. Now, content time uh, on the Epic TV universe. Yes. Uh, and Seb One, he's Seb had another film. Yes, fifth episode of the Vintage Rock Tour. And uh, here's a clip. Tu l'as fait en solo, cette voix. Ouais, j'ai fait en solo. Et c'était un peu spécial parce que la première fois, enfin, la, le premier essai, j'ai été jusqu'au deuxième seulement. Et en fait, je me suis déballonné, je suis redescendu. Ensuite, je me suis reconcentré en me disant, merde, je suis quand même pas un berlot à ce point-là. Je suis reparti, je suis sorti. Relativement fébrile en haut, alors que j'ai été habitué à le faire plusieurs fois de suite. Et après ça, quand je suis arrivé en haut, je me suis dit putain, mais qu'est-ce que j'ai fait là Qu'est-ce que c'est une connerie énorme Et d'un autre côté, c'était l'anniversaire. On rigole pas avec l'anniversaire, c'est pas déconner avec l'anniversaire. avec l'anniversaire, c'était 20 ans après, tu vois. Right, so another episode about climbing history, climbing history in France, um, and there are some shocking root revelations and people shocking in this Shocking root shocking. revelations? Well, you know, free solos is like... <laughs> oh, I see, right. Shocking is in heart, heart shocking is in, shocking. Yes. Nice. Um, I would like to chat about Japan uh, okay. because the climbing scene in Japan is amazing, right? Yes. Uh, the outdoor climbing is sort of coming up. The indoor climbing is just out of this world. But anyway, we've got a whole six-part series looking at various different stories in Japan. That's dropping this week on Epic TV. Check out this little teaser. Iwashitsuwa. <laughs> Check the main Epic TV channel for that. Make sure you subscribe or you miss these videos. And of course, subscribe to Climbing Daily. What? I mean, if you're here and you hadn't subscribed, what's going on, peeps? Mash the buttons, hit the heart button thingy jobbies, uh, and join us every single day. <laughs> I'm going to say it's a red button, but for who's colorblind is green, isn't it? I don't know, is it? Is it red, I think so. Because colorblind people have issues like at stoplights. Right. So they need to distinguish what's on top and what's on the bottom instead of the colors. Right. So maybe the people who haven't subscribed yet are colorblind and don't see the red button and we keep saying I red see. when it's green. I'm with you. I think you might be lumping all colorblind people into one great big red green category here. But um, yeah, yes. hell, just press any buttons on screen. It's comment of the week time. See. Now, we put a shout out a couple of weeks ago for people to send their comment of the week songs to us. Right. The take up has not been great. I'll be honest. Hardly anyone. We did have one um, one video that came in with two comments of the week, actually. Can we play it? Can we play it? Go. Comment of the week. Is that good enough? We can do a worse one. Comment of the week. OK, let's go with that. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for uh, not letting me sing this week. Yeah, nice one, Michael. Um, if you want to get involved in this, you can either email your video to climb at epictv.com or sort of drop us a DM on Instagram, something like that. We'll pick you up. But uh, yeah, come on, sing, peeps. Let's see you. Comment of the week was tricky this week okay. because there was an overriding theme. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. I love a bit of comment. Um, this okay. was all about the, the, the book underneath the knee pad for that sit start for Big Island. Yes. Because um, it was originally, I can't remember the name of it. Sudan Sol. That, yeah. Because, okay, apparently it's called, he called it, uh, Simon called it Sudan Sol because that was the name of the book he had under his knee pad. Yeah. And we reported on this news, I know, but you never mentioned it, that well, he had original. a book 
under his knee pad. Yeah, okay. So you were saying that it was a confusion, but it got it got cleared up, yes. all right. But there was a lot of comments about whether it's aid or not. And I want to weigh in here because I missed last week's show because I was away filming. So mm. here's my opinion. Are you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? It's controversial. I do not think it's aid. And the reason I don't think it's aid is twofold, really. Number one, who cares? Okay, look, he climbed it with a pad. He, everyone said what the deal was. Like, well, if of anyone... course he climbed it with a pad. Like, everybody has a crash pad. Yeah, okay, he got it with a knee pad. He put a book under it. Anyone doubting that that thing is not 8C plus or 9A, that is incredibly hard, okay? It's still incredibly hard. Who cares? He climbed it at that grade. The moves are still the moves on that difficulty. It's that grade at the moment. The second thing, right, is climbing adapts. So back in the day, okay, and also climbing is weird. So do you remember those like crack climbs that got protected by like cans? Okay, so yes, they'd like put the a can cans. in and then they thread it off because nuts hadn't been invented, right? Are you telling me that that's harder because they used a can or it should be back to the original grade because of that? No, it's just climbing evolves. We come up with things. If books under knee pads, right, is a new thing, then maybe we'll get an adjustable knee pads. It cha climbing changes. Also, climbing is weird. Remember that, that Peak District climb? I've really got on my high horse about this one. Remember the Peak District climb where Tom Randall clipped one of the bolts that was pre-in a gritstone climb and he used like a, a bamboo pole, okay? No one was like, hang on a sec, you can't do that because that's what the climb was. It just was. Okay, that was an half an hour monologue. Thanks, Matt. Wasn't it? Really? Uh, I feel a bit guilty now. <laughs> to be honest, I don't care that much at this point. The thing is that, honestly, think about it. If you add that much, yeah. okay, fine, it's three centimeters. It's still like more push power. You don't need to put on the boulder mm -hmm. to then, you know, stay within. Yeah. So I do feel it's aid because it's just the little extra help to actually push you on or from the boulder. Then again. I kind of don't care and it doesn't matter because it is a 9A but and like what are we talking what about? What happens if I bring out a brand of knee pads, right, that's that thick? Is that alright? <laughs> well, or is that aid? I don't think so. But so there should be a defined thickness of knee pads? No, I just... That, that's not the point! <laughs> We, we, we'll continue to have this debate after the show. You continue to have it in the comments. No, it's been but great. Like, <laughs> I've, enjoy, I've enjoyed it as an argument. It's fantastic. I think we should like strip climbing back Hands and feet. There we go. No shoes. There we go. If it's not naked, it's not a first ascent. Okay, according to Terry T. Oh, My <laughs> comment finally is from Quag Huang, and he says what? small shin, small shin index problems. By the way, I think he's saying that you know we've got ape index. Yes. Maybe we should have a shin index. Maybe we should have a finger index. I like this. We should index our bodies into different indexes. I swear, climbing should be more simple than this. <laughs> like, is this? I don't know. It's the future. Go. Is it, it the future? Yeah, this is it. Okay. Well, your, your comment of the week? My comment is from Jimmy Patterson. And he says Kasia Rosen climbed an 8C on site in 2016. So last week we were also talking about um, hard on sites. Mm -hmm. And apparently uh, there was this article on 8A that specified that. An eight, an eight C, um, an eight C climb as an unsighted yet yeah, by a female, but I looked up this Casia Rosen. Yeah, I know. Route. Her. She's amazing. Yes, so yeah. she was nineteen years old in two thousand and sixteen, and she climbed T one full keep in Oliana, mm -hmm. but it's like considered to be eight B plus eight C. Okay, interesting. So yeah, I mean, it's still like super impressive. So I don't think it, like, you know, good job. <laughs> That's it for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the new show. We'll be back next week. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you soon.